Welcome back, food enthusiasts, to the Culinary Timeline Channel, your clandestine getaway to history's most enigmatic gastronomic adventures. Today we embark on a journey that's not for the faint of heart. It's a tale riddled with the echoes of secrecy, power and indulgence. Cast your minds to Spain, once starved for freedom and at the epicenter of its turmoil, General Francisco Franco. No monarch, yet seated at a bountiful table enjoying a feast fit for royalty. Ladies and gentlemen, gear up for Franco's unspeakable feast, Spain's strongman's secret recipes. A riveting exploration into the luxurious and covert culinary world of Spain's formidable dictator. Within the ironclad walls of his regime lay the hidden flavors and forbidden feasts that we will unveil together on the culinary timeline today. But before we plunge into the opulent unknown, we invite you to traverse our channel's rich repository of historical culinary escapades. Dive into past journeys and flavors that have shaped our world and let your curiosity guide you through the sumptuous tales that we have prepared for you. Remember, as we untangle the threads of General Franco's culinary preferences, we urge you to stay tuned until the very end of this video. Why, you ask? Beyond the dining table lie astonishing stories and ingredients that will not only amaze your senses, but may just change the way you perceive history and its delectable secrets. So to our cherished subscribers and newcomers alike, we gracefully tip our chef's hats to you in gratitude. And if you haven't yet, please do click that subscribe button to join us on every historic foray into the past's plates and palettes. Without further ado, let's uncover Franco's favorite dishes on the culinary timeline. Before we throw open the curtains of the past to reveal Spain's strongman's secret recipes from the clandestine corners of culinary history and uncover the dishes that delighted a dictator, it's important to understand the context of post-Civil War Spain. At that time, Spain was facing numerous challenges and struggling to establish its presence in the world. As we embark on a journey through taste and time, we must keep these historical factors in mind. But as Spain struggled, Franco dined like a king. But what secret delicacies were reserved for his table? Stay with us as we sizzle, stir and savour Franco's favourites. Remember that we must tread carefully as food was not merely sustenance in this context, but it was a symbol of power. A defiant Franco established dishes to evoke national pride, yet his personal preferences remained a mystery until now. During the post-Civil War era in Spain, which was marred by poverty, Franco enjoyed lavish feasts in the walls of El Pardo Palace. Imagine the grand halls of Franco's palace, the clinking of silverware, whispered conversations, and secrets simmering in pots all that time. Our protagonist, Generalissimo Francisco Franco, ruled Spain with an iron fist, but his taste buds danced to a different tune. Beneath the military uniform, Franco harbored a passion for gastronomy. According to a famous report on telegraph.co.uk revealing the dictator's meal habits, it stated, Franco dined like a king as Spain starved. Spanish dictator General Franco enjoyed lavish three-course meals despite severe food shortages in the months after the country's civil war. Moreover, it mentioned that just a fortnight after his newly formed government introduced a severe rationing system, a menu dated May 29, 1939 shows a proper three-course lunch was served at the dictator's table. On that day, Franco and his wife Carmen were offered a traditional stew from Asturias that included chunks of chorizo and black pudding, followed by a fillet of hake and topped off with a selection of cheese and fruit. The menus, emblazoned with the emblematic eagle and coat of arms used under the Franco regime, came from Franco's table at the Pardo Palace where the dictator resided following his victory in April 1939 until his death in November 1975. The collection of menus was discovered among papers belonging to a former civil guard officer, Carlos Palacios Miguel who in the autumn of 1936, when Franco led the military uprising against Spain's Second Republic, was appointed as the Generalissimo's stenographer. He remained close to Franco's side throughout the ensuing conflict and became a member of the dictator's household staff at El Pardo, according to a weekend report in the national newspaper Publico. For years he collected the daily menus and they only came to light following a clear out by relatives after his death. Let's begin with his reported favorites, the famous Spanish vibrant pistos and tender solomillos, each bearing witness to the complexity of that time. Pisto is akin to a ratatouille, which is a simple yet exquisite melding of tomatoes, peppers, onion and zucchini. Solomillo, also known as tenderloin, was a favorite of the famous dictator. 
It was considered the finest cut of meat for the man who held Spain's reins. Another recipe that Franco was known to enjoy was Petit Poussin à la Hamburg. A delicious squab stuffed with tongue, liver and pistachio nuts created a symphony of flavours that transcended the brutality of his dictatorship. But why this dish? Perhaps it was the paradox of the delicate bird concealing the warrior's heart. Or maybe it was the clandestine meetings where political alliances were forged over shared plates. Franco's culinary journey started in the humblest of kitchens. Born in Galicia, he grew up surrounded by the rich tapestry of Spanish cuisine. The scents of olive oil, garlic and paprika were the notes that played in the background of his formative years. As Franco rose through the military ranks with time, his gastronomic adventures expanded gradually. He travelled across Spain, experiencing the diverse regional cuisines that would later influence his tastes. From the seafood delights of the coast to the hearty stews of the interior, Franco's palate evolved with each military campaign. Franco's daily routine matched his authoritarian rule in an unexpected way. At breakfast, he would sit in solitude savouring raisin bran. Yes, you heard that right. Two scoops of raisins to fuel his iron grip and woe betide the soldier who dared offered him Fruit Loops. The dictator's choice was indeed simple and unassuming, yet oddly fitting. Perhaps those raisins held the secrets of his longevity. But Franco's true obsession lay elsewhere in raw garlic, or rather in a kind of salad that he called the elixir of life, according to some reports. His salad consisted of chopped garlic, olive oil and lemon, a pungent concoction no less that could ward off enemies and allies alike. Another one of his favourite recipes was the Catalonian dish Escudella y Carandola, a hearty stew traditionally enjoyed during winter. Take a moment to think, can you guess the ingredients in this recipe? If you can, let us know in the comments below. In any case, this dish had intricate and multi-layered flavours that mirrored the complexities of Franco's regime. It was prepared using a blend of meats and vegetables, which reflected the diverse cultural influences in Spain during that period. Behind closed doors, Franco enjoyed extravagant feasts featuring dishes such as Cordero a la Miel, a lamb dish that included honey as one of its ingredients. The combination of savoury lamb and the sweetness of honey created a symphony of flavours that left his guests astounded. One of his other favourite go-to meals was Pulpo a la Gallega, a Galician octopus dish. Legend has it that he enjoyed this dish while discussing military strategies with his closest allies. The tender octopus seasoned with Spanish paprika and olive oil became a staple on his dining table. Franco was known for his extravagant tastes, and the pages of history whisper with three-course meals while the nation was suffering from hunger. Now take a moment to share your guesses or thoughts on his favourite sweet dishes or savouries by participating in the poll below. Now let us see what desserts held his favour. Well among those sweet enigmas were rich flans and creamy rice puddings. These desserts shared the table with espresso crisps, a delight Franco seemed to relish. To this day, these small bites with coffee nuances remain wrapped in intrigue. Ah, the crisp sound. A delicate dessert for a complex man shrouded in darkness. He most definitely had a sweet tooth and according to reports, one of his weaknesses was crema catalana, a Spanish custard dessert with a caramelized sugar crust. It's widely believed that he treated himself to this delicacy after a long day of political manoeuvring. With every bite, we must question the balance of power and sustenance. Was food his weapon or consolation? General Franco didn't just eat, but he utilised cuisine as a tool for his regime. Despising regional diversity, he suppressed the pride of local traditions, promoting the nationalistic Spanish tortilla. Paella, though iconically Spanish, was promoted to represent Spain's unity under his rule. It's interesting to note that the tortilla, which was originally used to suppress cultural identity, became a meal shared across households. As all Spaniards could make it from humble ingredients such as eggs, onions and potatoes. Similarly, paella, which was once a specialty of Valencia, became a national emblem, with its saffron-infused rice serving as a canvas for the country's agricultural bounty. It's extraordinary to see how the narratives of food intertwine with history, creating a tapestry rich in both pride and oppression. Concluding it all, we can clearly say that Franco's feasts were clandestine affairs. In dimly lit chambers, he would indulge in delicacies such as shark fin soup, believed to increase virility. To me, it just sounds like some classic Bond villain stuff. And the pièce de résistance? 
Bossentang, a secret recipe for dog meat soup passed down through generations and whispered among loyalists. It raises the question as to why these prohibited dishes were consumed. Was it for power, superstition, or an attempt to experience life beyond dictatorship? We turn it to you to keep the discussion going down below. To Dine As Franco Did offers a glimpse into the depths of history's kitchen, a place where food served up both splendor and ideology. These recipes allow us to taste the complexity of his era and the unwavering spirit of a Spain that never ceased to dream of freedom. Well, there you have it, folks. The unspeakable feast of Francisco Franco. Each bite of these dishes carries a story, a memory, and a part of Spain's soul. But what kind of emotions or memories do these dishes evoke in you? Please share your thoughts, your family's recipes, and the meals that bring them to life in the comments section below. Join us next time as we continue to explore hidden histories and tantalizing tastes together. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay informed about our next culinary adventure. Until then, remember that even the strongest regimes have their secret cravings.